Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Um Actually Comics. My name is Tristan, and I'm joined today, as always, by Bob. Hello, Bob. Tis I. Say hello to the fine people. Hello, and hello, fine people. On the internet. All of you. Uh, I love you. You know, there are some fine people on the internet. Yeah, there are. It's just very fu- very difficult to find so, them. So, well, they find us, though. That is true. That yes. is true. They find us. Uh, and, and we appreciate uh, that. Yeah. And so we're back. Uh, it's been we've had a few mishaps and nonsense, and but yeah. we're we're back doing what we were supposed to be doing. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, I had a cat-related family oh, emergency last dude, week. You have had many things, but I have had many things. We're just there's so many things going on. So let's talk about comics. Fuck it. Let's yeah. Do there's so many now. comics. There's so much. And there's good actually really good comics this week. Lots of really fun stuff. I was really happy with the stuff that I read this week. So, yeah. um, yeah, I actually read a lot of comics this week too, which is cool. Like you can tell when the comics are good. Cause like you actually <laughs> yes. want to read them all from cover to cover. And then now I'm like, what am I going to do this week when I want to read comics? I guess I'll have to read old comics. Like, I mean, which an, I do anyway. an old comic book, like <laughs> say for ad- example, adventure comics, number 260. Yeah. This is a fun, fun. Uh, I think it's an, I think the reason it's, been reissued is is a Aquaman reason. It's the origin of Aquaman. Oh yeah, yeah. And I sense. believe it. I believe it is Ramona Fredon art. But there's a, also a uh, cool Green Arrow backup in it, and uh, a Superboy thing, which is probably insane. I didn't actually read that. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I, I was mean, just like, why did are. they re? Why did they reissue this? But yeah, it's fun, fun, good, 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 good fun. It's fun, good, good and quality, good fun. Good fun. <laughs> good quality, good fun. Uh, Everybody loves it. Uh, another thing everyone loves is Canada. And uh, you can't have Canada without Alpha Flight because no. they have saved they've saved their bacon, no pun intended, many <laughs> times. This fine, fine group of mutant fellows. Um, and now they've got their own Wolverine this time, which is really wonderful. Yeah, Again, it's the son of Wolverine. His name is Dokken. Not yeah. to be confused with Dokken. No. Don uh, Dokken. And not to be confused with the stuffed animal manufacturer, Dakin. No. Uh, it's not on it's any none of those, those things. things. He is not a cute, cuddly little teddy bear. No, he, he is. is cuter and cuddlier in this version than uh, he has been in past. I mean, versions. sure. He's actually he's also actually with, a fairly cute, cuddly character. Yeah, yeah, with those bone claws and I that mean, mohawk. <laughs> yeah, sure. Mohawk his, ponytail. His metal mohawk. Um, a, a fashion disaster that I have had many, many times. Uh, honestly, fortunately for me, I went bald and lost the ability to do that to myself. That's a basically long time where ago. I'm at right now. Where I'm like, <laughs> oh, my hair's too thin. It's like that is not the place that I want to be leaving hair to be the only place on my head with hair. Like, uh, too bad. Luckily, I've done the metal mohawk enough times that I feel like yeah. I've really gotten got my it. point across. I'm a scumbag, and you should stay away from me. <laughs> next, next up, the egg bot. Oh God! <laughs> oh man, you can do it. Oh, I mean, I, I've done it. Before. I could do the egg bot. I used to. I actually used to do that when I had a completely, perfectly ridiculous head of hair. Wow! And I, I had a pink, dyed ponytail and nothing else. It was just a Krishna braid with <laughs> dyed bright pink. And uh, I had a I auditioned pink for a, I auditioned for the classical department with Ooh. that haircut, and I got surprised that they turned me down, and it made me think that I was not talented enough to be in the program, and didn't realize that they were just dickheads. And they were just like, "We don't like this guy. We don't with want. Pink. We don't want this. We don't want this pink. <laughs> this whole this whole thing that's happening here. This should not. <laughs> we don't want this to be. It's not the vibe. <laughs> you could put a tux on. It's still not going to be classical <laughs> it's not enough fix for us. This shit." Uh, all right, Avengers number eight. Yeah, uh, it was an Avengers comic. I believe there was some avenging that went on in this comic. I'm not sure how much, but some. I mean, yeah, I don't Perhaps. feel like they avenged all that much. Um, there's a couple of characters in this that are very, very stupid, but that's okay. Yeah, there's uh, one that's I'm got not... a cool costume. I will say that one of them, I like the one with the cool, the one that looked like a, another character that I can't think of the name of. There's I mean, one whatever. of them that looks like a. Talk about this comic book no, this I can't. I can't think of any of their names. But one of them is a speedster uh-huh. that has like that ridiculous like. I think there was like a Disney comic that had a character with that same, like long, like looks like the uh, looks like the uh, like a biker like a bicyclist helmet like a tour de France oh, one of those like sort of yeah, yeah. helmets. Ugh, I hate that design so much. Mm. Yeah, not great. Yeah. But uh, you know, honestly. Know. 
nobody likes the Avengers comic. Like it's it sells very poorly. Uh, but considering it's an Avengers comic, but it's uh, this is probably better than Avengers has been for quite a while. Yeah, no, it's there's nothing wrong with that. I wouldn't. I got nothing nothing negative to say about this comic book. I wouldn't kick it out of bed for eating crackers. Is what I, I'm saying. I actually would. I don't like crackers in my bed. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> That's racist. Wait, uh, what is it? <laughs> I'll explain crackers to you at some point. Okay. Um, they're white people. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> I thought I, th- I thought crackers. I genuinely said something racist. And I was like, I'm really <laughs> sorry. But I was just making fun I'm of so white sorry. people. That's not racist. At no, all. it's not because we deserve it. Because look at us. Yeah. <laughs> this is, we do this shit. We do this. I mean, if if this is not to be mocked, then what the fuck is? Right. Agreed. <laughs> uh, Gang War, the amazing Spider-Man number 39. Better than I expected it to be. Did Actually, not too bad. I thought it was great, honestly. Yeah. I like. I was. I guess I was probably cautiously optimistic about this series, where I was mm-hmm. like, I don't think it's going to be bad, but I was like, eh, like I don't really need this crossover. And there's something about that I, for a for a book like this that has the level of casualties mm-hmm. that they're putting into it. I don't like that personally. Like in a Marvel comic. That should be saved for every five years tops. Like a story like this for me, mm. where you're literally like, you have the fucking circus of crime showing up, hypnotizing the entire <laughs> I actually like of that, the, where he's hypnotizing I, I, people to be his thugs. Absolutely. I funny. did. I mean, I enjoyed it. But again, they're just like shooting at AIM soldiers, and AIM soldiers are just mowing down civilians that are hypnotized. And it's like, that's a big big casualty count for this well they weren't shooting bullets they, they, they made a point to, they were like, shooting point imagination they bullets. were shooting well, yeah it was like whatever you imagine it to be right. except it wouldn't shoot bullets it only shoots lasers and acid <laughs> yeah so like, yeah right so they were maiming people but not necessarily <laughs> killing them and they were just helpless people who happened to be walking past the ringmaster you know what they say if you don't want to be burned by acid, don't go to New York in the Marvel Universe. Yeah, I know, right? There's a few places you could never get me to go. Yeah, I, I the idea I will, that there are still people living in Gotham in New York, I'm like, come on, man. I will say one very important thing, and it won't come up until we get to the F titles, but, but fuck this I'm shit. going to just see the the future listen, the, the, li- the listener for the future. Pay attention when we get to F, because I'm going to point out something about Marvel and their editing that needs to change. <laughs> When we get to F. All right. Remember Gang War Spider-Man they made is where a, we started this. They made, a, they made a comic out of Funky Winker Bean and they yeah. never should well, have. And, and an important detail if you aren't following Spider-Man is that one of the main uh, antagonists driving this gang war is the daughter of Tombstone who yes. happens to be also the Beatle. Yes. Uh, who's been around. It's like a female version of the Beatle who's been around in Marvel for several years. Yep. Okay. That's all. Gotcha. All right. This is Batman number five. It's a spring issue of Batman. Aw. So it's too early. It's too early for this. Uh, I love this. This is like five yeah. classic ass Batman comics from the 40s. Great. How could you not love this? Yeah. I don't know why they reprinted it, but whatever. It's fine. I don't, I don't know why they reprinted it. You could do any of these. these. They should do I mean, one constantly. I, like, I agree. I'm, I'm never going to be mad. I mean, yeah. the Frank Miller year one, I'm kind of confused by. It doesn't feel like it's necessary, but. That's our, our, yeah, when we get there, I'll we, have a couple things to say about we're there, that. We have we're there. Everything. Okay, so Frank Miller Batman, I get why you would do it in this format. It's hard to find. It's a pricey comic. Like, sure. you want to read it, whatever. But, like, it's not a true facsimile because it's the recolored version from the trades. So, like, the ads are just kind of bad scans yeah. of the ads. But the coloring of it, that said, I do think it looks a little bit better than it did initially even though I like the original version the best um, because of the paper quality difference, Fair. but whatever, yeah, it's yeah. fine. It's a Frank Miller year one. I think they're going to do all four. Exacto mundo. Yeah, and if you don't want to spend $50 on it, you can get this one for three ninety nine. dollars I it. don't want to spend $50 on I it. I sure don't. Uh, I want to spend $50 on Batman 140 I don't know if I spend that much on it, but it was honestly, it was a little messy storytelling wise like i like what's going on is is just it's a little this whole zurin r thing that zadarsky is doing is is starting to get a little hard to fucking follow i think it is a little i think he i think he might have bitten off more than he can chew i think he might think he can do it and well it's it's a great idea for like yeah i don't know i just like part of me is like i love 
the original Zurinar, who was an alien named Tlano, <laughs> and he just like was an actual separate guy yeah, yeah. from a different planet. And like, I kind of want him to show up and just be like, yeah, I just was doing this to you the whole time. Sorry. I mean, <laughs> you know? there, it, this is entirely possible. That would be. I mean, why not? I mean, why not? Tlano, he's due for a uh, he's due for a, a resurgence. I love he that guy sure and is. his bat radia. I don't know what that is. That's his device that he has. Oh, okay. It's called a bat radio. And that's how Batman knows that he wasn't dreaming at the end because he actually has this bat radio. And he's like, but was it a dream? And he's like, but I actually have Talano's bat radio. It's like, Batman, you were just fucked up on drugs and you made this thing called a bat radio. It doesn't do anything. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Morrison started this ball rolling. Yes. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fine with it, but, like, it's time to... Cut, yes. cut through this to exactly. get to where we're going. Bring back the Great Gazoo. Yes. Uh, okay, we've got uh, Batman Santa Claus, Silent Night. God, I love this you... comic. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. You will never, ever, ever get me to not buy a comic book where a superhero teams up with Santa Claus. Yeah. It will never happen. I will buy it. I don't care if it costs yep. $10, $20, whatever. It's, it's if so Santa good. Claus and Batman or if Santa Claus, Superman, Santa Claus, Spider-Man, I don't care who it is. If it's Santa Claus, I'm in. Like, this and is, this actually was good because it's Jeff Parker who is awesome. Jeff Parker is awesome and I did not, I saw that it was Parker and I was like, oh, yeah. I wonder who that is. I, it's not a person I thought. I didn't yeah. even didn't even occur to me it could be Jeff Parker. It's it's interesting because it's sold as Batman Santa Claus, but it's like there's a ton of people in this, like Zatanna's oh, in absolutely. it, and like Nightwing, Batgirl, and all kinds of yeah, different yeah. characters. And Zatanna's like huge part of it. Yes. Um, and Krampus. Uh, <laughs> Spoiler Krampus. alert! I really like the design for Krampus. I do too. He's Fucking cool. A. I like oh, there's a so DC good. Krampus now. They should totally have him come back. I'd be into him fighting Batman regularly, anytime. Not just oh the, not just the Yule times. That's such a good name for a fucking movie. All right, everybody shut the fuck up. I'm <laughs> copywriting DC Krampus. Yes, it is about a Krampus that goes around punishing members of Congress. So everybody <laughs> shut up. DC Krampus, it's mine. I get a co-creator credit because okay, I said absolutely. it out loud. Yes. <laughs> DC Krampus. Uh, DC Krampus. All right. You heard bird, it here first. Bop. Birds. Of prey. Ah, this is. I think honestly, the I've loved this comic, and this is the best issue of the comic so, thus far. It is just everybody fighting on it, Barda versus Wonder Woman, like complete throwdown. Uh, Cascade Batgirl, just like or Little Bat, they call her, <laughs> like just totally being awesome. Like there's she, she gets like two really good moments in it. Um, Again, she's my favorite. I, yeah. I don't know why, but for some reason, Cassie Kane is my like my favorite. If you haven't read this, like I you got to read it. There's oh, like a absolutely. there's like a thing at the end that's just like I like I don't want to spoil it for people that are reading the comic, but there's like a there's a really great Cassie Kane Batman. moment. Like it's at the very end, and it's just like a one panel thing where it's just like perfect. Does she talk now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's that, talked for a long. That's time. That's kind of a bummer. Yeah, I miss. She that. doesn't talk a lot. I, that's one of those things where I wish they would retcon it so that she was Snake Eyes again, but that's okay. Well, I think that just like you can have her so that she can talk, but like just have her not really talk a lot, which is what Kelly Thompson, of course, is doing yes. because she's a brilliant writer. She sure is. Uh, here's one. Um, so, Blood Commandment. This comic, uh, this is, it doesn't even say on the cover which number it is for fuck's sake. It's like two or three. It's like either two or three. This is one that I, this is part two. Um, I remember reading this first one and being like, no thanks, not for me. Uh -huh. And then I kind of gave it a little skim, uh, and I think I might have changed my mind on this one. All right. I think this is a little bit more interesting than I was giving it credit for. Cool. Um, I flipped through it. I was like, definitely, this is not for me, and I did not read it. Like, it, it's giving me, like, originally it was giving me, like, rip-off 30 Days of Night vibes, and now it's kind of giving me 30 Days of Night vibes in a good way. Hmm. Like, it's sort of more of a, like... An American vampire, the strain, like that kind of stuff. I like the strain. It, it, the, I like the strain too. Uh, I like the strain, the comic. I thought it was really I good. I thought the comic was great. And yeah. the show was actually really good too. I, I've read all of the novels. I have not read the novels. For reasons I can't imagine. That last <laughs> fucking novel, and you're like, boy, it sure is going to get cheerful at the end. And you're like, oh, you really stretched this <laughs> this Nazi metaphor to the breaking point. This is horrifying. Oof. That last one is just brutal. Yikes. 
yeah, it's a it's a real like slaughterhouse five situation by the end of it. That's just like, oh my god, Ugh. the only way you could end this is by nuking everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, okay, so here we go. This was my biggest surprise of the week. I would say, what is it? Uh, this is Bloodrick. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was fine. To I me, did... this was the this was the big surprise because nice. I thought this was going to be garbage. I just like I, I thought it would be what it was, and it, it did not surprise me. But I it, didn't. I thought it was going to be straightforward. I thought it was going to be just a barbarian comic. I okay. thought it was just. I thought it had no no point, and was just going to be slaughtering things and like smashing heads and things. And instead, this is kind of a. It feels like it's working on a metaphorical level as well as working on a straightforward barbarian level. It's someone who has hunted the forest to near extinction and he's wandering through and he's starving and he doesn't know what he's doing. And he's like, this is an interesting, it's, there's an interesting thing going on here. Okay. He finds himself in his own head with intrusive thoughts about the hunt and he can't continue on. And th- there's a lot of things happening hmm. that I'm interested in seeing what it means and why they're doing it nice. because it definitely feels like it's operating on a level above the level that it's showing you uh, like i think there's an extra textual well is it, one thing that i uh, that struck out for me on this is that the first page uh like the inside cover is like a auto bio thing where the guy who did it is like this is the story of how this happened this comic happened and it was basically like he drew it and then he like sat on it for 10 years trying to like turn it into this like epic and like did all this like and then just like realized that it had been 10 years and that he had put all this work into it and had never like actually published anything so he went back to square one nice did what he did for this and then uh took it to small press expo and i guess like a bunch of people like i think he says kirkman is one of them but oh, like nice. uh there were other people and and uh they saw it and they were like yeah and then it worked its way into getting main mainstream published and that's how his life um, got flipped turned upside down yeah that's how he became the prince West of a philadelphia place called <laughs> born and raised uh yeah no like i said i'm i'm excited to see where this goes and also it is yeah and again small press thing it feels more like an indie like, it feels like something that you picked up at an indie press expo, honestly, yeah. in a way that I'm just like, it's just, it's more interesting than I expected it to be. Yeah, nice. Uh, okay. Uh, Blue Beetle, number four. I also think this is a really good, yes. t- like, this is, I think, yeah. my favorite take on this version of Blue Beetle yet. And I love the kind of, I don't know, it's just a good superhero comic. It's really fun. I have not read it, but I'm just looking at the cover, and there's something very weird to me about those two heads about to kiss that is just like kind of gross i think it's because one is an alien with no nose well i mean they both look like aliens with no noses because of the the costumes it's also it's both look like it's misleading because it's not like it's it sort of looks like romantic on the cover but it's actually they just talk in the comic yes and it's it's just like she's like a person of the race that made his armor and so he's like getting advice on what he needs to do because there's this thing that's trying to kill him and his family and stuff and is it capitalism man yeah oh shit (laughs) (laughs) you guessed it (laughs) damn uh anyway buffy she's a vampire slayer she's about to eat this bunny yep don't do it don't do it buffy uh, the fan is on, so the pages are blowing. Oh, no. um, Should I turn the fan off? Actually, yeah, if you could do that, that would can do probably that. What's be the next helpful. comic? The next comic is Crep Show. All right, you're on this one. I am on this one. Let me tell you a little thing about that. Ooh, that was loud. Um, Sorry about that. Okay, uh, so Creep Show. I obviously love this comic. This has a couple of... I can't even remember what the stories are now. Uh, obviously, they're all revenge stories, as always. It was like, uh, I can't remember who did what, but uh, some people did some dumb stuff, and uh, boy, did they pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> the art in the first one is super mall goth, but I fucking love it. Like, it's really good. Like, it, uh, if, if it turned out, I wouldn't know the name of the guy that does 
the art for I Hate Fairyland, but if it turned out that it was him, I wouldn't be surprised. And the second story is written by uh, James Asmus, and I always remember that guy's name because when I lived in Chicago, I met someone and they were like, hey, you like comics? Have you ever heard of James Asmus? He's my roommate. And, <laughs> nice. uh, and, and I never met him, but uh, I was always funny. like, oh, I was like one degree of separation from a guy who <laughs> published comic books that I've read. That's awesome. Okay, look at that. It's Daredevil. Mm -hmm. Now that's a daring devil if I ever saw one. He's daring to devil. And you know what else? He's a handsome devil as well. Sure is. And so is Nega Duck. Yeah, he's more handsome, I think. You're probably right. I mean, as ducks go. Uh, But unfortunately, he's a very negative duck. He's negative Nancy. Uh, We've got Destiny's Gate coming up. I keep saying Destiny's Gate. Because I want to say Destiny's Child. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but uh, it is Destiny Gate, and this is by our friend Dabari and uh, Simon Gow's doing the uh, the coloring on it. It looks fantastic. Awesome. Uh, fantastic, like the Fantastic Four. Yes, we've made it to F, <laughs> and now I can tell you that this is uh, the same character in Gang War that is currently ripping through New York City is like a bon vivant, like, idiot app like it's literally just like a a goofball in this comic yes. and it's like you have two comics coming out like the same day featuring the same character and in two of one the same characters the character is like a total like murderous like machiavellian gonna like take over the city and then yep. the other one is like i need to check my app yep and it's just step up your editing game marvel it's and- you have a shared universe you have a responsibility to not have things like this happen. And of all, could have just used a different character. Why would you need to use Beetle and White Rabbit yeah. the same week that you're using them as main characters? Yeah, totally. I thought it was a gang so war crazy. chapter, and then I read it, and I'm like, why are they just being like dorks? This is dumb. Yeah, I agree. I honestly, like, and I think I have to say I like Fantastic Four. I am, a, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for Fantastic Four. This is Four. probably my least favorite issue of Fantastic I, Four. I right actually now. think the issue is really good. I think the artist sucks and i'm sorry i'm just not a fan the last issue where it was like the thing's head had no neck it was just like a round ball on top of his body with no neck and i was it was it's bad like that's bad (laughs) and then like this one is like worse it's like they kind of started to there's no neck but at least it doesn't look like a ball that was just like stuck on like a sticker but like they need a good artist on this and it's a shame Absolutely. because the writing is great and it just shouldn't the art is like come on you're marvel you have billions of dollars like yeah, you yeah. can even if your publishing wing doesn't have access to that same budget like you can hire some artists to put on some comics like come on just i mean i would i would say just There's stop like, paying alex ross a billion dollars for every comic except for the fact that this next issue has the greatest cover i've ever seen on a comic book and so I'm just like the the Fantastic Four, the number fifteen that's coming out next month. Oh yeah! Oh my God! The one where they're being chased by the brain with eyeballs down the street. It's like the greatest fucking cover I'm, I've ever seen. I'm fine. I don't care about the covers. Are great. I uh, like. I just you could get Ron friends to do it. Like yeah. get somebody who knows how to draw comics to do it. Like these guys are not like. I'm sure they'd all be. There's a lot of people that aren't that that are skilled comic book artists well here's okay you know like you know get them get them on there like Here, have them do I, it i agree with you in fact i would like to talk about this all right you've got here fire and ice from dynamite comics oh yeah that's the not Bill the Willingham other where he got mad at dc because they made a comic that had the same title oh and it's like course. oh yeah i'm sure they were really aping yeah, they, on I'm your sure fire they were, and ice they were dynamite about series this. dude but but at the same time Bill Willingham is writing this yeah. and it's being drawn by an artist who's amazing. Like this is really cool artwork. It's, oh, it's like dynamite is like showing like, Marvel just up, like killing it. Yeah. And this, this book should not be anywhere near as good as it is. And it is absolutely wonderful. Well, I mean, I, I, I do think that it is for, for dynamite. This would be like having Frazetta universe is like yeah. a kind of, a, it's a get and they want it to look good. Right. But like I, I've been, I dynamite used to just be like the, the thing that you would shit on. It was just like the worst comics and like, that's no longer the case. And in many cases, the artists on dynamite comics are better than the car- artists on Marvel. And that's just like, should not be happening. That is, that is embarrassing. It is. It Marvel should be embarrassed with some of the, I'm, I'm sorry to be that guy, but like they just really should. 
What about this fire and ice? I love it. <laughs> it's so good. I mean, there. Are, it's I'm, one of my favorite DC. The titles thing that's right funny now. is it's that, so like, good. I know you love the art on this one too. I like the art, but it's like, good. this is definitely a case where another person, like, where art is so subjective because uh-huh. this art would to another to a handful of comic collectors would be like the worst thing you could possibly. Oh, I mean, if you don't like that style, but like this artist is a good artist. Like there's no, no, like it's it's just, it's of a style that you may or may not personally like. I'm not talking about like a style. I don't care if the art is of a style that I like. There's issues. Like I'll read a fantastic four comic that's well-written in a style. Like if it's like, I mean, Marvel is notorious for fill-in artists. I get it. No, I don't. This isn't a fill-in artist though. This is like, they hype the artist on the fantastic four. Like, on all of on this run, I mean, they relaunched Fantastic Four in re, in in anticipation of a film that they're going to announce any day, and it's going to be a big tentpole thing. And then, like, I mean, maybe they're waiting on they have some super do- no because Ryan North is a big deal. Like, that's like not. I actually like the art in this, in the Fantastic Four comic. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I just think it's not. I think it's mediocre. It's super 90s is what it is. <laughs> really? It's like I don't, really I would, 90s. I don't know. Doesn't I don't know. Anyway. Me. Okay. So Fire and Ice. You liked it. I love it. It's okay. great. Uh, and uh, Ghost Rider, number 20. I think this is just... I don't really get it. I don't get it. Uh, Hellboy Winter Special. Love it. It's got a Yule Cat. It does. It's Hellboy versus a Yule Cat. <laughs> and it's set in 92, so or 90 or 92 or something like that. So it's like day one Hellboy. Like if, if you go on the chronological scale it's like all of this tent all of the set pieces that were there when i loved hellboy yes. and matt smith yep. through it who is yeah, yeah. matt matt smith and figredo are my two like amazing uh, both, the best both non-mignola incredible. hellboy artists agree uh hunger and the dusk is out this is a book that is not for me but man if it is for you it must be your favorite fucking book because it is like it is the most this book that yeah. you could possibly be. If you like elves fucking, I just it is your book. Yeah, I just don't give two shits about this kind <laughs> the of The art's really stuff. good. Speaking of good art, like though, right. as much as this is not my thing, I do think the art is yeah. very good in this comic. Absolutely. And I mean, I'm sure the writing is great because it's G. Willow Wilson, but it's yep. like, again, fantasy stuff is not my bag. So like elves and orcs, you kind of lose me, sadly, unless you're a J.R.R. Tolkien I'm not really going to get down with it, unfortunately. Uh, Invincible Iron Man is continuing to be a series. Yep. For some reason that is inexplicable. I mean, there's always going to be an Iron Man comic, but like, oh man, is this one open? You're going to make it do the sound? What? What do we have here? We can hear him arrarg. Well, here, I'll put this bag here, but wait, what? What? I haven't seen it. You have to, you have to, you have to pass it to me. I love it. Oh my god, what is this? Some sort of <laughs> <laughs> can, can, can I see it? <laughs> and that will never get old. Uh they put it in a bag so that comic shop owners didn't go completely mental. <laughs> You'll just hear us playing uh, just with one this of for the rest it's just of just one of those of greeting eternity. cards that it, like you're yeah, at, yeah. hey, we're at Target. Look, <laughs> this greeting card has Godzilla on the cover. <laughs> of course. Yeah, that's it. All right, I'm going to stop. And I like that it stops when you close the cover, though. I know, and you can actually read it. So, like, you open it, and then you flip the pages, and it's like, and you can continue to read the book, even though it's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I what makes me laugh, I mean, just because, uh, you know, I'm not a huge fan of CGC and all of that. Mm. It makes me laugh that there's going to be somebody who's going to be really pissed about the fact that it's going to be impossible to get a 9-8 of this. Like, literally, physically impossible. Why? Because the thing inside it is, you know, the size oh. of a mitten. And it's like, yeah. it's pushing out the side. So there literally is no such thing in the world as a 9-8 of this comic. Oh, well. Unless somebody makes them without the mechanism inside, and maybe CGC I... won't even slab them. Oh, and we didn't even talk about the other great gimmick comic of this week because we already passed it. Was oh shit, the that's right. Batman Santa Claus. There's a cover that is a. It's not scratch and sniff. It's rub and sniff, mm-hmm. and it's got a peppermint. Uh, it's like Santa's mouth, and it's like you rub <laughs> Santa's mouth, and then it smells like peppermint, mm-hmm. which means you have to stick your nose near a bloody Santa Claus mouth. Um, should I get that to, sh- to yeah, show? Yeah, sure, show? sure, okay. sure. Grab me that. Sorry, I knocked your camera, but 
It's it okay. seems to be no in the one, right place. No one wants to look at me anyway. Things still seem to be kind of where they're supposed to be. Uh, look, it's an empty seat. I didn't even switch back to me. Hi, it's me. I'm back here. Uh, Bob is going to look for that, so I'm going to put this up here. Uh, this it. is another comic that I didn't read, which is uh, Voices Avengers. Nah, Marvel Voices Avengers. Yeah, it's a Marvel Voices. I'm sure it's fine. Whoa, my voice. Speaking of voices, Your my Marvel voice got loud. Uh, here we go. Look at that. There's it's Santa. Cool, and it smells and right of here, peppermint. He smells like peppermint. Mmm. And it's really strong. You'll want to put it in a bag so that it doesn't make your comics around it smell like... Oh, it makes my hands smell like peppermint. Yeah, it's really, really... Oh, my God. It's like vaguely oh, patchouli-esque. <laughs> in, in that it's inescapable. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay, so... Yeah, it doesn't uh, smell like patchouli. It smells like peppermint. Midlife or How to Hero at 50. Yeah. It's a comic book that continues to be released for reasons unknown. <laughs> Midnight Some Show... Lines. A comic book that continues to be released because it's fucking awesome. Yeah, I like this one. Uh, it's really good. Again, it's just Dark Horse continuing to only release awesome books, basically. Yeah, well, this is the sixth gun uh, creative team of Brian Hurt and uh, Cullen Bunn. So it's a quality creative team and real good. And speaking of quality, Nasty from Vault. This is probably the one of the better, or one of my favorite things that Vault is putting out. It's it's fun. I mean, it falls into that same kind of thing that I, of course, am going to like. The Tristan it's, Pocket. Yeah, I mean, it really is like, it's obviously right up my alley. It's basically a bad movie in comic book form, so I like that. We got a copy of Knights number t- number three. Jesus. Yeah, I don't even remember I don't the remember other issues. Two coming out. I don't I remember number one. Miss it? Mm, I don't know. I had no memory of it. I was like, ooh, a first issue. And then I was like, ooh, number three. <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> I, I definitely. It looks like a quality comic book. Number one away. Uh, yeah, it looks good. I don't know enough about it. I don't remember reading number Maybe one. Maybe it was a week we didn't do a think it podcast was. or something. Maybe it was one that we skipped. Um, orcs, the gift. Orcs. Orcs. I actually really liked the Orcs. Yeah, when this it was, book has it was been. New. It's cool that it's still coming out. Has been quality. Uh, Our Bones Dust. Did you read it? I did. Yeah, that was really good. It is quite good. Yeah, I'm good. I, I'm a little burnt on uh, post-apocalyptic. We've destroyed the planet, but this was a good take. I really thought it was an interesting take. I will I will a hundred percent say as a as an aficionado of monsters and monster design, I will say that the reveal of the monster in this comic may be. One of the creepiest things I have seen in a comic book in a well, it's very not a monster time. though. You mean the alien? No, I mean the monster that killed everyone at the end. Oh well, they didn't show the monster. It yes, was just in shadow. Do dude, go back and look at it. No. They one hundred percent show him looking over a cliff, and I'm not yeah, going to discuss it like... because you don't say what you see. But what you see is gross. <laughs> I mean, it, it definitely is gross, but it, the monster is, I felt like it wasn't really revealed. Uh, I feel like enough creepiness is revealed about its attire and its nature that it is creepy as shit. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's creepy as shit. I gotcha. I gotcha. I don't want to reveal it because I think it might spoil it, but I no. think it's great. And it there's a scene in it that's very much like the massacre scene in Starship Troopers that also, it really gave me a, a strong Starship Troopers vibe, which yeah. I really liked. So this is, uh, the one thing we should mention is this is Ben Stenbeck, who is, uh, oh, I know yeah. I said that um, Matt Smith and uh, Figredo were my favorite, but Ben Stenbeck is a very good Mignola yeah. collaborator, and Mignola did the variant cover on this book. But it's kind of like part Mad Max, part like weird alien visitor, and then obviously this bizarre uh, monster. But very, very, very cool and just a great looking book, but not just like an art book. It has a, an interesting story concept. And speaking of Mad Max, we have a little thing called Petrol Head Number Two. I love this. I, this is pr- this is my pick of the week. I love this comic book so much. It's amazingly good. The art is so so good, and the guy who or whoever it is that does, I never heard of this artist before. Is like all art, all coloring, all lettering. Everything is this one person. And then Rob Williams is a. I, I looked him up. He's a Welsh writer. Uh, I think he's a 2000 AD yes, uh, a person, 2000 AD and like person. I'm sure has done other probably some Vertigo stuff or whatever. But um, Petrolhead is like death race elements, like 
chappy elements uh yeah, maybe sure. a little bit like yeah, yeah. it's it's a post it's it's not a post apocalyptic like although it is yeah no it's chappy. it's it is post apocalyptic in that there is like the world is destroyed there are several city kind of bubbles where humans live and that's the only place where humans live uh a man has created some kind of uh technology that he believes will enable them to repopulate the areas that are destroyed um and the robot state which is like the some of the coolest creature designs that i've seen in a long time the like eye ear mouth uh like magistrate guys are like totally weird and then there's the the petrol head is a character named petrol head but he is a he is a petrol head as well they basically the the city state government which is overseen by the big, kind of big villain of it is like bread and circuses. They create these different spectacles for people to get obsessed with. And one of them at one point was these robots that raced cars and it is no longer popular, but this guy is a remnant. He's, so he's a robot and he's got this really cool robot bird. And <laughs> yes, <he does. laughs> I love the robot bird. I love the yeah. characters in it. The, yeah. the, the dialogue is yeah. great. It's, it's just great stuff absolutely like my favorite comic of the of the yeah, week and it's, it's I real good really and it's weird too because like some of the best comic coming out right now came out today um we have i checked this out on uh, bob's advice and i did not regret it uh poison ivy number 17 yeah one of the things i i i will i will make one criticism sure Man, they do not like drawn backgrounds. Like <laughs> fucking Mignola drew this fucking thing. Like one panel in this entire comic has a background, and they're in the goddamned forest. Yeah. It's like, wh- how can you have everyone looks like they're in an empty room in like a 1960s sci fi movie? They're in the swamp. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it no, like I. a deciduous forest to me, bruh. I have looked through every issue of this series and it has very much not interested me and even the actually first two pages of this one where it's like harley and ivy yeah, yeah. in bed and they look like weird uh glass-eyed barbie dolls like a, it's, it's just a little like weird not loving the art style necessarily but the story yeah, was just cool. really cool it is really cool there was some great character beats with croc and um grundy and grundy uh and 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 poison ivy like it's just like i i, I just thought it was a good comic I have and a it question struck me do you think that the artist thought that they were supposed to be drawing Pitt when they put the chain around his wrist like that? Because Grundy doesn't normally have a big chain around his wrist. That's Pitt that yeah. has the big wrist chain. I don't know. Maybe they just thought it was a throw or maybe it was just <laughs> I don't like, know. maybe they but never read like, Pitt and they were like, well, it'd be cool if he had a chain cool, around his But he hand. totally like it's 100% that is yeah. like Pitt's hand. Yeah. There is a good cr- I mean, Grundy like versus Croc battle. Oh, there is. It's it. cool. That was good. And I, I just cool thought stuff. overall it was a, it was a much better comic than I expected it to be. And there's also a fun, like, I'm all, I'm a sucker for a get away from her, you bitch moment, and there's a good one in this. Nice. Um, all right. We've got Legendary Red Sonia. And if you are familiar with the Legendary series, that is Bill Willingham's steampunk universe for ah, all of the Dynamite characters. Okay. And uh, this is drawn by our own, our friend Katana Collins. And Wr- drawn by or written I by? I mean, written by, sorry. Drawn, uh, cover drawn by Sean. Yeah. Uh, he, Sean Murphy did a cover for it, and he did a fucking killer cover for it. Yeah. That cover is beautiful. Uh, this is this is cool. I actually really like this. I'm usually not a big fan of steampunk stuff, but I actually really enjoyed this. Um, and I'm listen, maybe it's a little self-serving, but admittedly... <laughs> uh, I also liked the fact that when we were at dinner one time and she was like, I have no idea what I'm going to start this fucking thing with. And I was like, you know, it never hurts to just start like in media res. You might as well just have a robot exploding with her, putting a sword through it and oil going everywhere and saying, you know, something along the lines of you might wonder how I got here. And (laughs) I open up the thing and I was like, Nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. This is Good not suggestion, a suggestion apparently. This is not a comic for me, but uh no, I, I do mean, think that again, it Again, steampunk is yeah, not my yeah. bag, but it's it's, it's someone's a good bag comic. and 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 it's good for that. And you know what else is you know what else is someone's bag? What? A little thing called a sacrificers. This is definitely my favorite. Well, this is now fighting it out with Petrolhead for my favorite comic going. <laughs> I sac- but sacrificers is 
fucking depressing. So, I mean, it's it, so it reminds depressing. Me, sacrifice it's so gorgeous. It reminds it's so, me so much of Low in that way. Where it's I like, never read I Low. Couldn't keep going it just made me too sad yeah i don't know if this is going to be like that i just the art is 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 brilliant and the story is very like i just i want to know what's happening but it's like it's definitely dark uh yes. i i do love it this if petrol head hadn't come out this would be my favorite comic of the week and, and i just like on the nature of it just being that good every issue is and that good although all... i realize i i didn't read number four even though i oh, bought weird. it and i can't find it and i'm like so i didn't really know what happened and i feel like i missed something big i think so um which kind of sucks but i will but say whatever. yeah this this definitely feels like uh, Reminder trying to make sure that people know that he's still a force to be reckoned with, even though he keeps making trash. This isn't trash. He is <laughs> exactly. still a force to be reckoned with. This is but one I mean, of the best comics but like, you have I've to ever admit, read. It's so he, good. He like, legitimately has been making a lot of trash lately. I mean, he made that bowling ball comic. I didn't I like mean, that. I mean, there's the, the Holy Roller, and I mean, he made some some Reminder books that are like old style Reminder books. Like uh, his last thing was uh, Scumbag or whatever. Scumbag I liked. Uh, well, but yeah, I know I was in this. Comic. I was sort of in the mo- minority on that. Um, it was. I heard it was some fine. negative feedback. I thought it was pretty good. And it's then just... that righteous thirst for vengeance, I thought was like pretty cool, but it was very genre for me, so it didn't. It didn't work in that. Like I wasn't really interested in that reading didn't... that story, but like it's I'm weird. It that looked worked good. for me on the first two issues, and then it kept going, and I was like, I don't think I'm following where this is going. I don't think yeah. I care. Uh, but I don't know. Anyway. the sacrificers for whatever reason, it's like yeah. just enough, oh, like brilliant. princess bride or yep. something like it's, I don't know what it is, but yeah, it's yeah. like, cause it's fucking dark. It is very it is dark. dark. Uh, okay. So what we have here is a Scooby doo number one twenty five. Rot row. Rot fucking row is right. <laughs> um, it actually says it also, it actually says rot fucking row <laughs> <laughs> on the cover. Uh, and next up is the Century. Ah, uh, yeah. Did you read this? I did. Yeah, it's I fine. liked it. Yeah, if you're gonna I mean, do a century book, it's a good I, take. Exactly. This is the, so. What this reminds me of is imagine if Heroes was good. Um, like it's the same kind of thing. It's somebody. So the century has exploded, uh, and his yeah. powers are in the universe. Very not unlike. Uh, was it Vulcan? Who is the character in the X Men? when all of the mutants were when uh, Scarlet Witch said no more mutants and then a massively powerful mutant fell from the sky because he was the all of the powers that had gone away got sucked into this one dude was it Vulcan I feel like it was like another Summer's brother and his name was like Vulcan or there something. was another Summer's brother named Vulcan Maybe I guess I don't it. remember it that specific the, I think it thing. was the story was called Supernova I think was what they called it okay. something like that but uh, yes but something like that happened and this is the same deal where essentially this so how many exploding suns would you say the century is it was wasn't a, uh, was it a million or okay a thousand so it's either a thousand or a million so Big difference between them. That's true. So let's just let's go easy on it. And but, say I mean, that, just one exploding let's, sun. Is... Let's just say that he's got the power of a thousand exploding How, uh, We suns. could just say one. No, no, no. Let's say a thousand. Okay. That means that there's a thousand people out there that can get the power of an exploding sun across the world. Yeah. That's and fucked you know, up. Just one of those people is going to have bad intentions. And guess what? One of them has cruel intentions <laughs> cruel. and starts making out with Buffy. Sarah Michelle Geller. <laughs> and so it's with a the power of a sub exploding sun. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, so, so essentially there's, there's one, one of these people, people keep getting these powers and destroying shit because they, they can't control them. Uh, Missy Knight is out. She has a century yeah, power. Some kind detector. of like super cop agency now or something. Yes. Essentially. Th- I mean, they're basically on sentry duty because, this is probably the most important thing in the entire Marvel universe if you consider the ramifications of the existence of a character like Sentry. Yeah. Who can basically like sneeze and blow the planet into pieces. So you should probably, you know, keep an eye on this power. <laughs> so she's tracking them down, but meanwhile there is an a a cruel intentioned person who is killing and taking the powers of other sentries. Yes. And so kind of miracle man kind of take. Yeah. Yep. So it's it's cool. 
Uh, I'm I'm actually more interested than I have been in a Century comic. So, mm-hmm. in considering a long time. you, I've never been interested in one. That's that's saying not, something. That's untrue for me. I thought that the the original actually Century, no, the original when Century they series was did good. The, the Fantastic Four retcon story was fucking delightful. I, yeah, I really loved that. Except for I did I, I at the time when I, that was when Wizard was still a thing that you could buy, and uh, they did that like fake story about. They found the art of this yeah, lost yeah. Marvel. I was just like, "Are you? Who are you fucking trying to kid?" <laughs> and they were like, "It was apparently this huge successful thing that people because they got Stan Lee in on it. And they got Stan Lee to be like, oh yeah, when they made up this artist.' And I'm like, this is obviously just like Artie Simak and like it's- some other guy smushed together. Like it's just like it sounds right, but it's so obviously fucking oh. wrong. And the art was like so obviously not from the '60s. It's but so people right it can't be wrong." people bought it and i was just it 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 dismayed me at the time that people bought it but that said the the concept was was interesting and fun um but beyond that it's like what are you going to do with that i mean also just like marvel superman it's just like marvel doesn't need superman and they've done That's it a the couple whole... times there's a couple of marvel superman well yeah i mean they did it in the 70s when the squadron supreme squadron supreme sucks i mean there's a reason why people were excited when they killed the marvel <laughs> superman the three four times they've killed that and they bag. just like every time they kill him they just get another version from another parallel yeah, world exactly and i mean I will admit I was excited in that one Squadron Supreme story where he rips the head off of Namor and it <laughs> like at the end of the issue Namor's head just washes up on a beach and I was like cool good nice. fuck that guy I think honestly that 12 issue series that Mark Grunwald did was actually pretty good yeah pretty good yep uh, this is even yeah, though I, just, I, I will never understand the whole like what if superheroes were real as a story is like who cares like no. why do you want them to be real I want them to be allegories yeah I for agree they're... standing up for little people and yep. <laughs> I mean the downtrodden and that's the people whole who point. can't stand up for themselves like you know it's like all metaphorical why does it I don't need to know what happens when Superman fucks <laughs> <laughs> Shazam number six. Speaking uh, of when Superman fucks, sp- you may get a Shazam. You get a Shazam. That's, I mean, that's just science right there. Yeah, one Superman plus another Superman equals Shazam. Yeah. Uh, now this Shazam was actually uh, it was a little wordy, but it, it's fine. I, I I'm I'm one issue away from making a final decision on whether I'm going to stop reading Shazam. Um, we'll see where they go with it, but it needs to get past this like this was not a six issue storyline and it's surprising that it's Mark Wade. Cause like you have a comic that where a guy hangs out with a talking tiger and the talking tiger has showed up one time and this guy <laughs> like what you're doing something wrong. It's cool that you have a dinosaur. Don't get me wrong. The dinosaur is pretty cool. The thing I actually really like dinosaur about, lawyer is maybe my favorite character. <laughs> yeah. Space dinosaurs. But the cool thing about this one, I will say is that they assign new um, identities uh, to some of the the other Shazams, okay. you know how there's like seven or eight Shazams because Jeff many? Johns yes. was like, we need seventeen Shazams instead yeah, of just one. We literally don't because um, that guy never had a bad idea. Nope. And um, now, so like now they have new roles to play, and if you're uh, in any way like a fan of the faucet pantheon of super characters, um, might be worth a look. You cool. might be interested. All right, Sonical Hedgehog, number 67. He's just sonicaling. Uh, Space Between is a comic book that nobody He's reads. Work it, lies. Uh, Strange New Worlds, The Scorpius Run. It's a Star Trek comic. Yeah. But you know what else is a Star Trek? Star Wars. Star Wars, the best You know Star what else Trek. is a Star Trek? Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dark Droids, number 41. Or actually, Star Wars number. 41 I actually kind of like that, oh, and uh, I, I, it's weird. I never read the Star Wars comics, but for some reason, I grabbed all of them today and mm. and and read them. And uh, that one, it wasn't bad. It actually wasn't like. I mean, the thing that's dumb about it is they're like, "What's gonna happen?" And it's like, "Okay, this happens con- canonically between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. I know exactly what's gonna happen to this character. They all die. I know. But whatever. Well. You don't know what's going to happen in D Squad because no. R two D two shows up and someone's gives be a, them the D. Someone's going to be a dink. <laughs> someone's getting the D, and it is R two. Nice. Uh, Hi, Republic. Getting it from that pink droid. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Blip chicka bloop bloop. 
Uh, Stranger Things, The Voyage, with, uh, I guess, Harrison Ford on the cover for some reason. No clue why that is. And if you're looking for an evil killer Santa comic and you didn't want to read the DC uh, <laughs> Batman and you didn't want to read the much better uh, book from James Tishinian from last week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, then read this not very good thing called Stuff of Nightmares by R.L. Stein. Stein. Slay Ride. Uh, rancid Lady Stein. Um, rejected Lover Stein. Uh we also have a book called Subgenre, which is a stupid size, and it's dumb. And it is stupid a stupid size. size, but it has art by Wilfredo Torres, and uh, sure. I am on board. Also, this R.L. Stein comic has pretty good art. I mean, it's probably fine. I really did not like that first series. I, so I'm not giving this one a shot, so that's unfair. But the first, the first version of Stuff of Nightmares I thought was so boring that I was, I was just so disappointed. Yeah, I'm not interested in this comic at all, but it has good art. Uh, but are you interested in a metal curtain? It's like an iron curtain, but with a Superman in it. Oh, that's Superman 78? I am interested in it. I like it, actually. Well, I, like, I actually like it better than the first series. Yeah, that's what people are saying. Um, I know, I, the art in the... Actually, speaking of Will Fredo Torre, Torres, uh, I believe he was the artist of the first one, who I liked mm. a lot. So I liked the art in the first one, but the story didn't move me in the same way that this uh, story is, is moving me. And I think this one is moving me because it is more focused on uh, Margot Kidder's Lois Lane fair version. And I think that was a good, smart choice. What we have here is a last Ronin and it's the real last Ronin. It's the last, the the last, last last Ronin to ever get published this week. uh, Just 476th printing, (sighs) putting a new fucking, addition on uh, Ben Bishop's house. Anyway, uh, we get... Okay, another big surprise for me this week would be Thunderbolts. Holy shiz. I will join the chorus of I would not have expected this comic to be as good as it was, and it actually was quite good. Yeah, it, massive shocker. But this was a great comic. Really enjoyed it. Cool. Into it. Uh, and actually deserved more words than we gave it. It really it was, did. Uh, if you're, it, if you're on the definitely fence in my, in my top tier of books that came out, yeah, this week. if you're on the fence about whether or not to pick it up, I, my vote would be definitely Absolutely. to grab it. It was, it was very enjoyable. Um, they mm-hmm. decide to kill the red skull and, um, the, the, the reveal with the Contessa was like totally cool. Yeah, <laughs> it was there, like there so many very, very unexpected and also kind of like made sense gross yeah <laughs> like i don't know gross <laughs> yeah it was, sure it was like i don't know just like the visual was very cool and it could have like honestly that would be my only complaint with the issue is that like doing that reveal that should have been like at least half a page yeah yeah because that <laughs> it is was a good ba- page bananas a good moment uh okay so yes thunderbolts two thumbs up from both of us absolutely check that out if if that seems like your thing and uh in just just to completely derail me saying how good dark horse is doing with things comes a little book called time traveler tales yes it's some fucking youtube yahoo and i don't give a shit and it's just more of this garbage it was yeah it just it read like a comic written by someone who had never read a comic or written a comic bingo nothing nothing bad to say about it art was fine i just kind of was like what is this i don't really get it what's the purpose yeah i don't know uh it's because they have lots of followers on the internet and they hope that translates into sales which it will not so yeah we will see i mean we'll see if that kid cuddy comic coming out next week or the week after sells we'll see if the you know if holy roller with all those guys sell it's just yeah how did Holy Roller sell? Did Badly. Oh. I mean, to be fair, oh. I also just shat on it on my, their fucking <laughs> reviews constantly. So people probably were like, I'm going to go down to Casablanca and pick this one up because I don't want to buy it from <laughs> him. I don't want him to I'm yell cool. at me. <laughs> uh, but uh, Titans Beast World Tour Metropolis. Uh, felt largely skippable. Um, there's like... I don't know. It was fine. Like there's like if it costs less money, it would be worth getting to me. And I'm sorry to say, like yeah. I want people to buy all of the comics, well, yeah, uh, because I, mean, I want your store to do well. But that said, uh, this felt skippable to me. You know what else feels skippable? What Beast World Waller Rising? 
And that was less skippable. I actually I liked hate the artwork. In I, that was the thing. I hate the artwork in it. And it's weird because it's an artist like like they were doing something. And I was kind of just like, it didn't work. It's it was very I hard. Swear it's this fucking DC coloring. It's this shit. It didn't help. I mean, honestly, like it's like it's the stuff that drove me nuts about uh, what was the, the 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 that fuck. Ne- Nemway, Nim, Nim. Oh, you're talking about Naomi. Naomi, that's the one. Well, so I'm. What works for me is not necessarily what works for everybody, and I'm not like I don't. I'm not trying to yuck anyone's yum or whatever. But like, I think that there's a reason why inkers exist. Yes. In yeah, yeah. traditional comics, yep. which is like, if it was just the pencils, it's like soft, and there's no the yeah, lines absolutely help you steer through. Mm-hmm the panels and when you have a book like this that is clearly not inked in that way it's like inked as like the colorist finished it over pencils or whatever it's just like if i felt i should have wanted to buy this comic because it's a ton of characters that i really like teaming up yeah i'm like that's awesome it's got like that val zod superman who i like it's got vixen one of my favorite dc characters it's got uh it's like basically it's like a it's the formation of a super team of black characters in D, like established DC characters yep. and they present it in a way where it's like is this the first of many and it's like no it's the only one because it looks like this and people yeah. can't understand what's fucking happening I mean th- this just And I'm sorry to the artist who is not an untalented artist Again I don't even I wouldn't even blame the colorist it's not even really their fault someone told them to do this I mean, you can't, but I mean, like, imagine you're watching a movie and this is the white balance that the film has. You would say, oh, uh, there's something wrong with this transfer. Like, just look at the cover. It's just white, shiny, like, it's hard to look at. The cover is clearer than Why? the comic. And, and it's and written by Chuck Brown, who I, is a good writer and... and Karen Grant, who is a, it just, it feels like a lot, like a lot of the milestone books, the newer milestone books kind of look, look sort of like yeah, this. Like and it's like, I don't. Overlays of color on top of color. I just wish it was inked. That's the only, like, I just wish it had line yeah. inking. Like, I think that that would have sold this book for me because it would have been clear and easy to read. And I'm sorry I spent so much time tearing this book down because no, there's but, really nothing it, wrong it, with it. It makes me crazy. It really does. It makes me crazy that they do this. It's it's someone's book and someone would be like, it doesn't bother me. I like it. And do you think so? I mean, I, I'm I sure. Know. Like You run the in, comic store. In the world, I think that it's possible that anyone could feel anything about anything. Yeah. But I think that this is definitely, to me, this is a mistake. Like there are plenty of people that there's always going to be somebody who's like, you know what? That snare drum on Saint Anger sounds fucking cool. <laughs> there are people out there who think that, and that's fine. It, it, I mean, they or, try, or who are just not bothered by it, or who aren't bothered by it. Sure. And this is this to me. This color choice and this lack of inking to me is the yeah. snare drum on Saint Anger of comics. Yeah, it's like it's it's a bold choice that is not the right choice to make. It did and not look s- fucking crazy. It did me. not sell the book. And the problem with that is for me also is it's like it's a five ninety nine book. Like Same. you're not who's going to drop six bucks on something unless it's like I buy every comic that has uh, Freedom Beast in it or like I buy every comic that has Dr. Mist in it or whatever. Like it's Ooh, I, I mean, it's pretty cool. It's a great group that, of characters. That's pretty cool. I, I was tempted like I really wanted to buy this comic and I just like I didn't enjoy reading it enough to bring it home. It's just it's so funny. OK, I know I'm I'm beating this into the ground. Yeah, it's, I yeah. but it, but it's funny to me that like I remember complaining about the Green Lantern comics when they got to the level. That this is not even this is like the Green Lantern comics were only like 20 percent as washed out as this. Mm. And I was like, this is hard to read. And this is like just literally five times worse than those. Uh, Anyway, I don't know. You know, what's not washed out and really easy to read. Uh, you suck. Yojimbo. Oh yeah. It's great. I love this new series. It's great. I'm so glad I started picking it up again. Yeah. Very enjoyable. Super, super cool. And another book that's so much better than it has any goddamn right to be. <laughs> True. Transformers. Yeah, Jesus fun. Christ. I mean, again. I don't know that I'll keep following this if I mean, he stops drawing it, but like, as long as he's drawing it, I'm on. 
but it's even, great. And the story was good. The story is really good too. Yeah, like it's, it's, he for, he didn't forget that it needs a human heart. You know, it needs I know. a like a he touch sa- point. He saves the fuck out of the cat in this one. Yeah, which I yeah was for like, sure. I was like, that's some good cat saving in this yeah. thing. Not and as it, good as the cat saving in Petrol Head, though. No, but but, close. but, it's, but the thing is that <sighs> this is, this is going to sound like I'm insulting him. I feel like Daniel Warren Johnson is he doesn't like to do things that are metaphorical. He doesn't like to do things that have several levels in them. He likes to do things that are, that hit you in the heart on one level. This is the story that I'm telling. I'm not telling it on multiple levels. I'm not telling it to, to, to be a metaphor. It is what it is. And, and it has a hook in a way that you're just like you, it's perfect for a transformers book again, because if you're going to do that with a Transformers book and make it complex, it's going to lose everybody. Mm. And in this case, it's just, it's strong. And like you said, it has a heart. It really, it really is just like, I, he saves the fuck out of the cat in this book. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, definitely does. Uh, it's if, good. And if you haven't read the Blake Snyder book, don't bother. Uh, you don't need to know what save the cat is yeah. unless you're writing screenplays and you want them to not sell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, Oh, Hey, Blake Snyder. How many, how many movies did you get made? Famous screenplay book writer. Uh, is that zero? Oh, wait, <laughs> I believe that was zero shots fired <laughs> and he's dead. So he can't respond. So I apologize for making Just fun of it. Picking dead on guy. people. Picking on dead guys pick back can, yeah i know he had some good ideas how many screenplays have you sold uh 15 oh okay i i sold yeah. i sold his that. nuclear family story that he wrote oh. to steven spielberg that's nice. where he got all his money oh. he sold a terrible script to steven spielberg called nuclear family about a family living after a nuclear bomb went off huh. in like a in a shelter and he made a million dollars because there was a big bidding war and then they never made the movie they never made the movie that's he made all of his money during those like when screenplays were getting the bidding wars and so he would just have these screenplays he'd put them out there there'd be bidding wars for them companies would buy them for a million two million dollars and then just sit on them and never make uh, them. so it wasn't that he didn't sell the books the screenplays it was that they, they didn't just get never made. get made yeah yeah they just wound up being like what are those things called blacklist scripts where mm. it's like they bought it just so they could yeah, stop someone else nobody, from getting yeah. it nobody yeah. gets to make it yeah cool. something like spite. that spite nice <laughs> Sp- yes yeah, nothing like good old human spite exactly all right what's uh, next venom yeah you know what i yeah. like i like this black widow fucking i like this black widow venom i think it's one yeah yeah I'm but, f- uh, I, I mean I take it or leave it it's fine uh walking dead but only deluxe walking dead yeah uh Man, I'm about to eat some words on this last one, man. Yeah, you are. Guess I've been what? shitting on Jerry Duggan for so long, and I do still think he is a hack, but X-Men. I fucking love these guys. I love these yeah. Latverian mutants. I love Dr. Doom in this comic. This is a good X-Men comic. Yep. It is good. Yeah, I good love stuff. these guys. I bought the last one, even though these guys were only on one page, because I was like, there's something about these guys that I'm interested in. <laughs> and then they like... They do it, and it's just totally badass. Like, yeah. exactly. This is what X-Men comics should be like. Wolverine is Wolverine. Yep. Sh- <laughs> Shadowcat is Shadowcat. Ms. Marvel is there for whatever reason. For they fight reason. these badass fucking Latvian mutants who are totally badass. The art's great. Oh. I... I yeah. This is what... This is what I, I... I don't give a fuck about Krakoa. I don't give a fuck about any of this geopolitic bullshit. I yep. just want the X-Men doing their X-Men shit in the way that is X-Men and yeah, yeah. It, this is it. And I love these new characters. They're great. Yeah. All absolutely. of them are great. Every single one, just perfectly. Whoever designed these, like if Jerry Duggan came up with them, kudos to you, buddy. Yep. Uh, and, but I oh. have a feeling the artists had a hand in designing these cause they are very, very cool. Uh, the design of them is, is very good. I love the, like through the years, where it's like there's like one page and it's like day one, week yeah. one, month one, and it's like just how they change as Doctor Doom shapes them into these fucking total badasses. Yep. It's really cool. It's super smart, and uh, I I really dig it. And what re- what it reminds me of, I totally forgot about this because I I just want to make sure that it's mentioned. 
uh, Red Guardian in Thunderbolts. Oh, yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah. I totally forgot how awesome Red Guardian is I mean, in that book. That's a great example of the movies doing something right exactly. and the comics being like, okay, let's do this. Because, exactly. like, when did you ever give a shit about the Red no, Guardian they before fixed that? the Red Guardian in, in the Black I've Widow movie. Yeah. The movie that I thought was brilliant and everybody thinks is meh. And I'm like, I just didn't it's see like it. It's like one of my favorite Marvel movies. It's just like a really good James Bond movie that's funny. Nice. I'm like, I, I don't understand. I love David Harbour. I, it's it's really awesome. sad to me that he got saddled with that shitty Hellboy movie because, oh man, that movie sucked. And, like, he, he should deserve, have been awesome as he Hellboy. He didn't deserve that. He did not deserve that terrible fucking movie. But <laughs> Hellboy, sponsored by Mountain Dew. <laughs> Hellboy, sponsored by, like... Uh, we can't. We're not gonna get ACDC. We're just gonna have some Buck Cherry do the fucking ACDC. Whatever the fuck. Oh just the God. soundtrack of that movie was so fucking Everything bad. Everything about that movie. You was know, terrible. I'll tell you one thing. I don't think about ever when I'm reading a Hellboy comic, and it is rock and roll heavy metal. Yeah. It is just not the vibe. And the fact just, that they sold it so hard on that was just like I knew it was gonna be bad from the trailer. Didn't yeah, give yeah. a shit. I'm no. psyched for this new one. I love that there's like no details about it. It's like they filmed it. It's already done. And they're just like, no one knows anything about it. It's That's fucking great. Smart. That's the way to do That's it. That's very smart. I, I remember I made a joke because I was like, I'm not going to go see this thing. And I was like, I, I can't remember who it was, it who, was who was excited to go see it in the theater. Somebody I knew was excited to go see it in the theater. And I was like, tell me when the, ma- when the monster energy drink product placement shows up. <laughs> and, uh, and he was like, dude, monster energy drink like three scenes in Oof. <laughs> yeah. it's like yeah sure was yeah i could see that coming uh i knew the demographic they were going for but uh whatever yeah. there were some really good moments in that movie though yeah no i mean that's it was like it could that. have been a good movie that's, that's very easily i think that was probably the thing that i hated the worst about it like if it was just you could see terrible. the good movie that existed it's underneath just, it. Like if it hadn't been like flipped to director, director and all this yeah. other crap, like the, it had like 17,000 cooks in the kitchen yeah. for that movie. But it wasn't like Chappy, like to drop another one that I mentioned earlier, because I've been thinking about Chappie a lot because I got so into Petrol Head. And then I was yeah, like, yeah. this reminds me of Chappie. And then I realized it's actually nothing like Chappie at all. But um, well, yeah, because... I mean, it isn't. It's not a like. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, it sort of is on, on a like very it. superficial nor uh, Yolandi Vizer, but um, as themselves. Yes. But um, <laughs> as but no, like scumbags. that guy who made that movie. Like, it's a District Nine movie. District Nine's great. Yep. And that guy's like, I loved this movie. I thought I made such a cool thing, and everyone fucking hated it so bad. It like destroyed yeah. me as an artist. And I'm like, that sucks because like does suck. Chappie's you- fine. There's, yeah, it's not a bad movie. As far it's as remakes than... of Short Circuit go, it's okay. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. I wanted to make an indie film that was like Short Circuit, only worse. <laughs> no. Chappie. Oh, fuck. No, you know I'm what? i go home and watch Chappie, goddammit. Here's what I have to say about Chappie. I'm never going to watch it. And so you've never even seen no, it. No, I I have not, and I will never take like, your negative attitude. I just listen. You know how I feel about sad robot shit. Yeah. It's a thing that like okay. Do not bring your sad robot shit here. I cannot fucking handle it. Have you seen Wall-E? <laughs> no. Whoa. I will not. I will. That is not, the saddest sad robot. It can. And it's very good. Suck a dick. Wall-E is good. Fuck all of that. That's good. That's like, the last Disney movie that I watched that I was like. This movie is actually really fucking good. And mm. granted, there's probably other ones. I know Up had really good vibes about it. But Another I just one that makes you want to kill yourself. Didn't see it. Ugh. Anyway, I gotta. We gotta. Yeah, I think let's get the fuck out of we've here. We've had a long one tonight. Yep. All right. Yes, we're over the the hour mark. So uh, let's get out of here. Thank you so much for listening. Follow us uh, at Coast City Comics and uh, buy stuff from CoastCityComics.com. Rate and review the podcast. We would really appreciate it. And uh, we'd appreciate uh, any of your business that you could send our way because this time of year blows Mm. and we are broke as shit around these parts. So we will take it. Get that money in here for Christmas. Yes. Seriously. Buy one of those $500 uh, Sandman uh, (laughs) masterpiece with the with the crazy mask and everything do that get it get the plague mask <laughs> do that yeah. uh anyway uh that's it and uh follow bob at uh at dollar binge yeah i actually i'm starting a comic book and I'm also gonna make a comic book i'm not gonna tell anyone about you it you can't until tell it's... anyone about it no because as soon as i do it will never happen you'll be sued uh anyway all right. <laughs> that's true actually 
<laughs> That's the whole I point of what you're sued. doing. So don't talk about it. John knows it. what I'm talking about, though, and he's listening. All right. We will see you next week. Thank you so much for listening. Goodbye. Bye. Stop recording.